This is exactly right. Welcome to my favorite murder, the mini-isode, where we read you your shit. It's things like emails with stories inside of them. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> There's not a list. <laughs> that's literally it. Would you like to go first this week? I wouldn't. Okay. I don't want to break, break Tra- tradition. Tradition. Yeah. What, what for? Okay. Then the subject line of this is, I won't read it. Great. Do you want to go? Want me to go first? He can go last for once. Whatever you want. No, don't put it on me. <laughs> I have a good lasty. Okay. Maybe. Do you have a good lasty? No, nah, not like specifically for. No. Yeah. No. I, mine. I have a last. A feel good lasty that uh, Great. that's about grandparents. I'm going first. Do it. <laughs> Let's break tradition. <laughs> Maybe we should have these conversations <laughs> off mic. <laughs> Guys, this is the kind of solid gold content you can expect from us that's right week after week do you like decisions <laughs> listen up do you like live decisions as they're being made hot breaking decisions hot breaking decisions people <laughs> discussing things uh this is called my close encounter with a murder cult Ooh. hi guys you guys are my favorite I started listening after my girlfriend recommended your podcast she also reminded me that I have an interesting story to share so I thought I'd share Great. I was born in Venezuela. When I was seven, my family had been making arrangements to move to the U.S. One day I was hanging out with my cousin who lived two or three miles from my grandparents' house in a rural town in the middle of nowhere, Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> they wrote it like it. <laughs> it was dark. My aunt reluctantly let me ride back to my grandma's house. This was a usually fun ride, just a dirt road with nothing but vegetation on either side. I was enjoying the night noises. God, being outside alone in a, as a kid at night. The best. Oh. And if you're far away from the city yeah. if you're in nowhere venezuela i yeah. bet those stars are pretty rad i bet yeah um i was enjoying the night noises when all of a sudden there was complete silence i could <clears> feel <throat> the tension in the air Mm-mm. i looked around me and noticed i was being surrounded by a group of people holding candles what they were chanting something i couldn't understand when they got close enough to touch me, I rode as fast as I could all the way to my grandma's house. Once I got there, I jumped off my bike, ran to my grandma, held her tight, and just cried. Ooh. She saw the fear in my eyes and just held me. Aww. That morning, a girl that was close to my same age was found dead in close proximity to where I had been that night. No. Next to her body, there were candles, black feathers, and animal blood. This was the first in a series of child murders that happened in similar fashion with candles and all the other items near the bodies. No one was ever charged for these murders. It still scares me to think of how close I was to being a sacrifice of a creepy cult that may still be in operation almost 20 years later. Holy shit. I would ask you guys to avoid riding a a bike at night in the middle of nowhere, but let's be honest, there's no way you do that. (laughs) You're too smart for that. So instead, stay sexy and don't get murdered. Thanks, Leo. Wow. I know. Oh, that's so creepy. It's creepy and so sad. And now I want to read all about it. But I I would like to say this. Thank you, Leo. Because the important point of that, it's like when we talk about being aware of your surroundings. Yeah. You're enjoying the night noises. The, it means something when all the crickets stop making totally. noises. Totally. Like trust your weird little instincts. Yes. If you're if the hair is going up on the back of your neck, it doesn't matter how normal people look yeah. or how normal the situation is, get the fuck out of there. Yeah. Even like, yeah, just trust it. Totally. Oh. Creepy. So close. Okay, so pretend this is new. I'm not going to tell you the subject line of this. Oh, email. okay, great. Oh yeah. Okay. okay. It starts, after hearing the SWAT team story on a recent minisode, I decided y'all needed to hear this story. Okay, good. When I was 16, my mom asked me if I wanted to fly out to Arizona and Colorado to visit her side of the family, aunts, uncles, and cousins my same age, that we hardly ever saw. I was nervous but stoked because I was clearly an adult and traveling alone for the first time. Oh, shit. Mm Mm-hmm. So I flew to Colorado, spent a week with my family, and then my aunt was taking me to the airport to fly to Arizona to spend another week with my family there and then home. My aunt took me as far as she could in the airport, and then I told her I was fine. I grabbed a seat at my gate, took out my book, and put on my headphones. A random man, Mm -hmm. mid-40s, mid-40s looking, came to my empty gate and decided the seat he should take no. was the one directly next to me. No, no, no. Immediately, I was creeped out. I kept reading and, until he, of course, tapped me on the shoulder. How, wait, how old is this person? 16. Oh, she, got she's it. 16, he's mid-40s. Got it, got it, got it. He started asking me about myself and where I was going. No. 
I was so sketched out, I started lying. Good. Made up a name, made up the school I went to, made up the town I was from. I was totally freaked. His questions felt so personal and unnecessary. Uh. They are. <laughs> I kept putting my headphones back on, but he kept tapping my shoulder. No. Final straw, after th- about three attempts to ignore him, he pulls out his ticket and says, where are you sitting? I look at his ticket, knowing my own own seat number, and start to absolutely panic. <gasps> this dude is next to me no. on the plane. I tell him I have to get some food, get up, and go straight to the airline desk. I tell them the whole thing, that I'm super creeped out, and tell them I will sit anywhere else. The airline says they cannot help me or move my seat. What? Uh-huh. So I go to the payphones. This was in 2001, and I didn't have a cell phone. Ha ha. Sure. And I called my aunt. She could tell I was scared, but couldn't come back to the airport she was headed to pick up her own kids from school so she told me to go to the ladies room and stay there so at least i didn't have to be near him until it was time for Mm. my flight i went to the ladies room to hyperventilate for a bit and eventually decided i needed to leave and go back to my gate yeah oh no (laughs) as i left there were two men in police uniforms at the bathroom door they asked if i was tara and i said yes (gasps) They escorted me to my gate and we walked past the man being searched and his luggage <gasps> emptied all over the airport floor. They took me to the gate where they told me I had a change seat and I'd be seated first in first class. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Yep. I asked what was going on and they said, your uncle dispatched us. <gasps> Guys, my uncle was the chief of the Denver SWAT. How fucking yeah he was. <laughs> This was a thing I knew, but being the first time seeing them in person in years and whatnot, I just hadn't put two and two together. Side note, my uncle was the first person in the library after Columbine. Oh, my. Oh, Charles. She said that's a whole other story and a terrible downer, of course. Anyway, back to the airport. I was escorted to first class and sat at the window seat of my row while the SWAT team officer stood at the aisle seat until the entire plane was loaded. Then I flew to Arizona where I was met with an escort from the Phoenix SWAT to get me to my family. For the record, this guy may have just been may have a very different account of the story. (laughs) And I could have just been a hyper anxious 16 year old that humiliated a rando no whatever doesn't matter that's it stay sexy and always have your uncle send the entire SWAT team to protect you when you're creeped out in an airport Tara but here's the thing no no you're right yeah that man was talking that 40 year old man was talking to it repeatedly talking to a young teenager Mm -hmm. not a college age girl Mm -hmm. a a high schooler Mm -hmm. and why was he sitting next to her? Like that, I don't believe that he didn't know he was sitting next to her. It's very weird. It really freaks me out. No. I, and yeah, that's exactly it. And it's like, even if, you know, maybe he was a nice guy who's being polite. Don't fucking talk, men, don't talk to women unless they invite you to. But here's the thing. Normal men know that. Right. Exactly. Men, it's it's the thing of telling little kids, adults don't need your help. If an adult right. is asking for your help, there's something wrong. Right. It's the exact same thing. And he's not reading fucking cues of her putting her fucking earphones back in her head. No one that taps boundaries. you on the shoulder. No. There's a boundaries issue. There's an information issue. Totally. Anyone that walks up and starts asking your name, where you live, no. anything, that's a person with an agenda. Yes. Fuck that person totally. outright. Totally. No way. And I love, it's like, and don't be, if your uncle sent the entire SWAT and they were shooting up the ceiling. Totally. Good. Yeah. Because that means you're safe on that plane and nothing happened to you. And like, sh- fucking shame on that airline representative who didn't... Um, I thought that immediately she was going to like, I got you and put her in first. Yes. But no. <laughs> they had to take it to the fucking SWAT. Well, and all the way to the SWAT. All the way to the SWAT. But I mean like, that's... Yeah. I, I feel like she was saying this was 2001. It's probably different now. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think a teenage girl that was would go yeah. to them and say this is a problem would be like, sorry, and get in line. I just yeah. don't think that's the world we well, live in it anymore. Depends on the person, I feel like. I think because of Twitter and social media, yeah. like they can't afford that shit anymore. Blow it, blow it all up, blow it all up. I'm so glad it worked out that way. Because one time, <laughs> I'll just say this, yeah. and I'm still mad at myself, even though it's hasn't, it's not even anywhere near it. I was at LAX one time waiting for a flight, and a guy came up and sat in a seat right next to mm. me and started trying to sell me tickets to a pancake breakfast. <laughs> and he was in my space, and he was in my face, and he wouldn't leave me alone. And the implicit message from him yeah. was, "You have to buy these tickets for me to get away from you." And I did it. <gasps> And well, that you had you followed your instincts too, which is don't piss this guy. Like somewhere in your mind, it's don't like 
Uh, uh, yeah, it's, yes. I write it in the book, the fuck politeness chapter, where it's like sometimes you can only fuck politeness to a certain level, yes. and and feel safe. Yes, sometimes you go along to get along right. and end the salute, end the situation that's around you. Yeah, but I'm still mad because. What if it had gone really poorly if you had told them yeah, to fuck off? Yeah, that's true. But, and also, how did this person, how was a person like this wandering around an totally. airport? It was pre, it must have been pre 9-11. So how were the pancakes? They were so good. And it was, I met such a great church community there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Motherfucker. Fuck everything. Fuck, it <gasps> fuck everybody talking to you. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> Well, here's a good story. Mm. Actually, for this, my almost murder in the stairwell. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and furry friends. I work at an office building. You would normally need a key card for access. However, our floor was undergoing construction, so the security was lax, and there was a number of extra people coming and going for a few weeks. I should mention my mother has been embedding safety tips into my head since I was a teen. Mm -hmm. Don't take drinks from strangers. Be aware of your surroundings and parking lots. Don't wear a lanyard around your neck. Oh, just someone could grab it? I guess, yeah. And keep your keys in between your knuckles, etc. Pay special attention to that last one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was leaving work one day and took the stairwell. One, because it was much faster than waiting on the elevator. And two, I sit at a desk all day and thought I should get a minute of exercise. And then she writes, ha. <laughs> I walked the floor fight flights down and noticed a middle-aged man at the bottom. I said, hi, excuse me, and monitor and motioned for the door because he was blocking it. He looked up from his phone, gave me the most creepy look slash stare, and lunged forward towards me, putting his arms around me in a big bear hug. Uh-uh. My instincts kicked in immediately. I need him in the balls as hard as humanly possible <laughs> and proceeded to stab him in the cheek with my fucking car key. <laughs> he yelped, started crying like a little girl, and yelled every obscenity possible at me. Fucking asshole. Yeah, you're yelling at her. Mm -hmm. As I ran back up the four flights of stairs in a panic, I got to the reception desk, told her to call security while I dialed 911. This was before I listened to the podcast, so my fuck politeness attitude was non-existence. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Yeah, you just you, beat the shit out of this guy. It was right there, baby. Don't you worry about your fuck well, politeness Well, then she attitude. says, looking back, my dainty excuse me was so stupid, I should have immediately turned around and went back upstairs when I saw someone I didn't recognize, but that's not true. No. I mean, no, you did you tried you, your best to be a human. It turns out this person wasn't. Yeah. And so you fucking defended yourself. Yeah. You were acting like how normal people act. Right. With normal people. Right. And even if you had gotten attacked and raped and hadn't fought him off, it's not, you didn't do anything wrong. I hate everyone so much. <laughs> Side note, had I not taken my car to work that day, I would have only had a key fob on my keychain. But because I drove my husband's car to work, I had a nice chunky key to stab that motherfucker with. <laughs> yes. Anyway, stay sexy and don't get murdered. Please come back to Orlando soon. Love, Sarah from Florida. Oh, that's an amazing story. Oh. Uh, also, the presence of mind just to go right for the balls. Yeah. In that, in that moment, because I think a lot of times you would just freeze up. Yeah. I, I know I would. I'm yeah. sure I would. Or they would be prepared for the need. That's what I always fear is that they're going to be like, I, you know, I imagine kicking someone in the dick daily. Oh. And I always imagine that maybe they'll be pre prepared for it and block it. Be wearing a cup like from their <laughs> JV baseball team. That's right. Or be a eunuch. Or, <laughs> you know. Then what are they doing? <laughs> Wait, what are Listen, they doing this I live for? in Narnia. Just okay? <laughs> <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> my imagination is insane. Don't forget you can gouge eyes also. Ooh, That's gouge something eyes. Someone, someone said recently because they said in they teach you this. Again, we have to do. Oh, my God. We have to do a, a self-defense class. Yes. But they say that you don't think of it because it's so extreme. Right. But if you have a free hand, go right for the, go the eyes, nose, put a, a finger, finger up, up the, the nose. nose. So yeah, poke someone in the eye, right? Yeah. Like, bink. That's you, you get to the t eye tissue, <laughs> you get up the nose, you do whatever you can invasively. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid to shove a key in an ear. <laughs> I feel like, um, I feel like a, a forehead to a nose bridge would be a great. Yes. Smack that's smack that motherfucker on the bridge of their nose. That's the Belfast good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I wish people greeted each other like that. Okay. A boom. In Narnia. <laughs> Classic headbutt in Narnia. Okay. This. Mm, mm. Okay. This is like choice. Italian pizza box. Italian kiss. chef finger kiss. Okay. I'm not going to read you the subject line. Right. Hello, beautiful ladies, Stephen and fur babies. <laughs> I was listening to the mini-sode when you read the story about the girl trying to scare her grandmother, but instead it was someone trying to break in, and it reminded me of this story. Oh, my God. 
Both my brother and his wife used to be cops. They both switched professions and are firefighters now. They have always taught their kids what to do in emergency situations. One day, my niece, who was about 10 years old at the time, was at her friend's house. Well, while there, someone broke into her friend's house and threatened everyone inside. My niece was able to sneak away and head home. But instead of calling for help... She grabbed my brother's gun, <gasps> loaded it, and went back to her friend's house. What? They lived next door. She walked in, aimed the gun at the man, and told him to get out of the house. Luckily, this was <laughs> enough to scare away the man, and he left without harming anyone. <laughs> Holy shit. Ten years old. Needless to say, my brother and his wife were both proud and horrified <laughs> yeah. when they found yeah. out yeah. what happened. And le- needless to say... They moved their guns to a different location, (laughs) locked them up, and had a long chat with their kids about the correct way to handle a situation. Yeah, they were like like telling them about how to how to defend yourself, but didn't start with number one: call the police. Yes, you're not the police. You're ten. You're in a fourth grade, Uh and you don't have to take this on. This is not. This is for adults. Yeah. Although you did. You did. And therefore, you're the most badass 10-year-old of all That's time. That's right. And I will never stop smiling because I've heard your story. Stay sexy and teach your kids to call 911 <laughs> instead of taking on a burglar by yourself. <laughs> Sherry. Amazing. I I love that 10-year-old girl. Maybe I'm I'll sorry. have one kid. <laughs> just one. Maybe I'll have one 10-year-old. I'll just have a 10-year-old. I picture this little girl. This is when I first read this and I could not stop giggling. I pictured that it's like a terrible home invasion scene. And and I s- picture a little girl with pigtails sliding backwards over the back of a couch like when no one's looking. <laughs> like a slug. Just yeah, kind of, just kind of sliding back. Maybe she uh, she's uh, double jointed and just kind of puts all of her things at a joint. <laughs> Very circus style. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's Cirque du Soleil backwards uh-huh. over the couch. She becomes liquid. She's liquids out the door form of an ice cube shape of um and but then it's pigtails kicking the door in yeah with the gun going get out of this motherfucking Please, house motherfucker. <laughs> she's got braces Please, motherfucker. Please, motherfucker. <laughs> then she takes out a retainer so she yeah. can say it really clearly <laughs> oh i just love it amen she children like do not touch guns. guns don't Fuck, lock up your guns, everyone. Everybody, don't touch your child. lock your guns. Children never touch guns. It's not, don't touch guns. We don't think it's cool. Also, don't listen to this podcast if you're a child. Get the fuck what out of here. What are you doing? Ten? Get out of here. Except for you, little, little yeah. hero. Yeah, little punky you Brewster. You little badass punky Brewster hero. <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Craft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. Okay, I have one and then you have an ending, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, worst, and then in parentheses, best <laughs> field trip ever. Uh. Hello, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and friends. I'm from a very small town in South Carolina. So small that we actually shared a high school from a, with a neighboring town, and my graduating <laughs> class still had fewer than 400 people. Mm. It occurred to me while listening to a mini said this morning that I have a gruesome slash delightful story to tell you from my time at this tiny, otherwise boring school. In early 2001, my 10th grade civics class went on a field trip to the county courthouse. I'd say there were about 40 or so of us, plus our sweet little lady teacher and a couple of chaperones who were being allowed to sit in on some small claims cases so that we could get an idea of what really happens in courtrooms (laughs) and how justice is served in Podunk, South Carolina. (laughs) Here's the thing. 
The docket was changed between the time the field trip was planned and the morning we arrived in court. Yes. Instead of watching folks get slapped with fines for parking violations and other petty crimes of that nature, we were treated to testimony for, yep, a grisly murder trial. Whoa. (laughs) For over an hour, we got to hear some of the more unsavory details of a man who had murdered his girlfriend, chopped her into a variety of pieces, tucked her away in an old chest freezer and dumped her and dumped it in the woods where it was later found by hunters. Oh, no. I cannot begin to imagine, all caps, what the fuck they were thinking by not informing the school district of the change (laughs) or by letting us into that courtroom when we got there or what was going on, was going through our teachers' minds when they decided we should stay for the whole tour. Yeah, for real. I bet their teachers were scared because they were in court. They didn't want to, like, get everyone up and move them all out during the proceedings. Or they were into it. Or they loved it. They murdered an uh, I think we paid a whopping $10 per kid. So clearly it would have been a tra- tragic to let a penny of that go to waste, which is probably why the court didn't, <laughs> weren't like, you shouldn't come today. Yeah, they were like, we need it. Yeah. And yes, they still took us to lunch afterward to a Quincy's buffet. I don't What's know what that, that is. I'm imagining it's like a buffet. It's a buffet based off of the 70s series. <laughs> Quincy. Quincy. It's, it's all, all about the coroner. It's all vintage. <laughs> <laughs> It's all vintage food. It's a buffet off of medical tables from the coroner's office. God. Stop it. To be fair, I think only one of my classmates threw up. (laughs) Stay sexy, don't get murdered, and for fuck's sake, verify the docket before taking a bunch of 15-year-olds to sit in on a trial. Sarah. Oh. (laughs) Can you imagine? But it's like you're the teacher and you're just like, now, if, if so there's 30 kids, if yeah. we all get up at once, this is the amount of noise we're going to make. Right. This is how mad this, the, you know, sheriff's deputy is going to be. Sure. Like, Instead of being like, hi, I have 15 year olds and they shouldn't be here. What the fuck is wrong? We're leaving. Yeah. You need to pause for a hot second. Yeah. No. No. Don't, no. don't interrupt. Have you been in a courtroom like that though? No. It's really intimidating. Is it? I had to go in for a, I was in a, like the middle car in a car mm-hmm. somewhere where somebody stopped and then someone hit me. Mm-hmm. And, I was so freaked out and it was just the Burbank like yeah. city hall or whatever. It's just so grandiose and intimidating. Yes. And it's like, you you know, that person is the one that make, d- decides. Yeah, one wrong move and they can fucking send you to prison. I don't know. Can they do that? Probably. I mean, it felt like it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm just here to say that I was in the middle. Yeah. And then they basically said this guy that got hit by me because the person hit yeah. me. I stopped in time. But then the person behind <sighs> me hit me and rammed me into the car in front of me. Oh my God. And the man, the old man in the car in front of me wanted all of us to buy him a new car, basically. Thank you. And so I was just there to be like, here's my insurance and here's yeah. what happened. And I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. And I got dismissed out of it because like it was basically between the car that yeah. hit me and the guy I hit. Yeah. And so I got to leave mid thing and I was thrilled. Was you were like, you were the fucking middle of a sandwich of people. I was the lucky Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> okay, read me the last one. I'm excited. Okay, this is good. Okay, great. My grandparents, the baby smugglers. Oh, shit. Uh Uh-huh. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and significant others. (laughs) Yes, you did it. My grandparents lived in Nazi-occupied Holland during World War II. Whoa. Opa was both a part of the Dutch underground and a high up in it and high up in a shipping company in the north part of the country. One of the activities of the underground was to smuggle Jewish babies from the major cities to the north where they would be placed with families until they could hopefully be reunited Mm. with their families after the war. Mm. Babies would be placed in the hulls of boats and ships. Oh, my God. And Opa and Oma would help to smuggle them out at the other end. Holy shit. Oh, I have chills. chills. Babies used to arrive with labels on their identification details pinned to their backs. Oma used to tell the story that on one trip, the person placing the babies on the boat clearly didn't read the instructions and put the labels around the baby's wrists. And when the boat arrived in the north, the babies had chewed off their identification (gasps) tags, meaning there was no way of knowing who they were whilst i'm tempted to be super critical i have to remember that this person was risking their own life to try to save others anyway the nazis ended up taking opa for questioning three times and he managed to talk his way out of it each time on occasion the family had to go into hiding the neighbors would come in and take all of their furniture to protect them from looting they would return 
And then they would return it when things died down. Oh, my God. I have to say that I'm pretty proud of the fact that my grandparents did something when it would have been easier and safer to do nothing. Oh, Oh, it's so true. I clung to this when my Oma got older and used to drive me absolutely friggin' nuts. (laughs) Quote, you should wear your glasses more often. You look so ugly without them. Oh, Grandma. Grandma. And she said, the last line is, saving babies gives you a lot of leeway. (laughs) (laughs) That's such a, like, from the past Uh thing for a grandma to say. I love it. Stay sexy and remember to pay attention to the details when smuggling small children. Jesus. Christy. Oh my God. Isn't that awesome? Yes. That's a feel, that's a feel good World War II story. An- anecdote. Yeah. So from now on, we'll say, do you have a good ending or do you have a good ending? And we'll decide based on that who goes first. Great. Yeah, I think we've done that before. Probably. And we were like, we're going to do that from now on. Yeah. <laughs> and then we did it. Let's do it. Okay, great. I forgot already. <laughs> um, send us your emails. My favorite murder at Gmail. We fucking love your stories. Thank yeah. you guys for writing in. They're always so good. Always. We love these. Yeah. Uh, and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, do you want a cookie? <laughs>